few months ago, my wife and I built a Hackintosh. Although it was a great experience, building a macOS system from the ground up has been typically a tricky endeavor. I concluded the video by citing a few problems that were encountered during the process and promised to create a follow-up video on how we managed to overcome those issues. If you're building a Hackintosh system of your very own, you may find this information helpful. My wife is a creative professional and she is most productive on Apple-based software. Unfortunately, Apple's own offerings have been high in price and lackluster in performance as of recent. This prompted us to build our own using traditionally PC-specific hardware. If you haven't seen that video, you can check it out here. Additionally, down in the video description below, you will find a complete parts list as well as links to where to find them on Amazon. We also received many suggestions for what to name the computer. And the one that we are going to officially start using is Snow White. Snow White, obviously because it's white, but also if you've seen the film, you'll know that a pivotal moment uh, is when the Wicked Queen gives an apple to Snow White, which of course is disguised. It's not really an apple, it's poison, right? So it's a, it's a fake apple in a way. The build was a fairly straightforward process with only a few hiccups, but let's address those now. First and foremost was the wireless card. I ran into a problem where the fans on the graphics card were making contact with the wireless card underneath it when they started to spin. I bought a flexible PCIe Express connector in hopes that I could bypass that and give myself a little bit more room, but unfortunately it was not the solution that worked for us. I posted the issue on the subreddit r build a PC and received a lot of valuable suggestions. The simplest suggestion that actually seemed to work was to install the PCIe wireless card into the full-size 16x PCIe slot underneath. You sh I should also note that some of you made that exact same suggestion in that previous video's comment section as well, so thank you for that. That did actually work perfectly fine. I was not aware that you can take a 1x device and plug it into the 16x slot, so thank you for that suggestion. Another problem was unexpectedly slow internet speeds. My own PC, albeit with a direct ethernet connection to the router, uh, was averaging speeds around 350 megabytes per second. Uh, the wireless machine, on the other hand, was topping out around 30 megabytes per second. I was expecting a marked decrease in performance, obviously, going from wired to wireless, but a 90% decrease seems a little bit extreme. This problem was further accentuated when Snow White was moved to her permanent location upstairs, even further away from the router. I ended up installing and uninstalling various drivers until ultimately wiping the drive and reinstalling the operating system altogether. I also invested in a wireless extender. This is not uh, one of those newer mesh style um, devices. This is merely an extender. The extender turned out to be a valuable investment at less than $30. Literally everything wireless upstairs now runs noticeably faster due to this guy. I'd highly recommend it if you are needing additional wireless coverage in locations of your home that suffer from connectivity loss or slow speeds. A link to this exact model can be found in the video description, however, they all pretty much work the same, just this one is from a reputable source and was pretty inexpensive. A combination of these two efforts yielded speeds closer to 100 megabytes per second. A third of the speed that I was getting on my machine, but still more than what she would actually need it for. So we were pretty happy with that. Audio is another issue that consistently plagues custom Hackintosh builds, and ours was no exception. So after a lot of research and trial and error, error with various drivers and Kex files, I finally found a cheap and easy solution. And I would be careful messing around with drivers you find online too much because there's really no saying what effect it could have on your computer. So I wouldn't do that if you have anything valuable at all on your machine. Uh, don't mess around with the drivers too much, unless you don't mind having to wipe your operating system like I had to do. That cheap and easy solution was a USB to audio driver, and it has both uh, the audio and microphone. Even though the microphone actually was working, uh, the audio was not, but this has both on it. These adapters cost roughly $5 and need no additional modifications or drivers to be installed. Yeah, it would be ideal to have the actual machine functioning in this capacity, but if you've spent as many hours as I have trying to get the audio to work, this becomes a pretty attractive solution. You literally plug it in and forget about it. Problem solved. 
This adapter is available uh, in the video description below. Um, it's not exclusive to Hackintosh builds. You can use it for anything uh, if you need additional audio and microphone inputs. But if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you want to see other content related to this video, check those out here. Subscribe if you want to see any future content, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.